Jacques Cartier is credited for starting the fur trade in North America, 1530 to 1540, with the Huron. Champlain established Quebec, Canada in 1608. At age 22, René Robert Cavalier Sir de La Salle reached Canada in 1666. He sailed the length of the Mississippi River and found some of its tributaries to set up fur trading routes. He claimed the area as the Louisiana Territory for France in 1682. The French expanded the fur trade into the Canadian Great Lakes Mississippi River area and controlled the fur trade from 1680 to 1763. From 1763 to 1816, the British were in control after the Treaty of Paris ended the Seven Year War with France in Europe. Earlier, 1629 to 1701, the Beaver Wars in Canada between the French and Iroquois Nation for the control of the fur trade resulted in the Iroquois being pushed south to the Great Lakes area, into the Ohio Valley, and eventually extending into eastern Illinois where they defeated the Illini after a 50-year struggle. The Illini Confederation were forced west of the Illinois River. In 1640, the French defeated the Sauk, who were forced west from Michigan, and then south from Wisconsin into western Illinois, where the Sauk decimated the remaining Illini by 1667. The Fox Wars, from 1712 to 1733, gave the French total control of the Fox River, which was critical for its Wisconsin River portage to enable their fur trade travel by water from Green Bay to Pré du Chien on the Mississippi River all the way to New Orleans. The Fox, now known as the Meskwaki, previously controlled the Fox River area. By 1733, the Meskwaki, or Fox, were defeated soundly by the French and were greatly diminished. For protection, they moved south and joined the Sauk in Illinois, who were also a Northeast Woodland tribe. They became the sauk meskwaki Alliance, a loose coalition of two separate tribes. As the French defeated tribes, the tribes were forced into other tribes' hunting lands that resulted in conflicts and dislocation of even more tribes. And finally, the French and Indian Wars that ended in 1763 following the defeat of the French by Britain in Europe. After the War of 1812, the United States eventually controlled the trade on U.S. land until 1850, when the demand for fur started to dwindle. Credit for the first European to step foot on future Iowa soil is given to Louis Joliet in 1673, nearly a hundred years before Britain took over the fur trade from France in 1763. Father Marquette, traveling with the Joliet party down the Mississippi River, interacted with a small remnant of the Illini tribe that they found two leagues, or about six miles, from the mouth of a river flowing from the west into the Mississippi, thought to be the Des Moines River. French traders Pierre Esprit Radisson and Médard de Grosselier, who founded the Hudson Bay Company for fur trading in 1670, have been claimed by some historians to have set foot earlier on Iowa soil in the Des Moines River Valley in 1659 or 1660. French fur traders found their way into the Midwest, including Iowa, by following streams and rivers, often crossing the Mississippi River at Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin. Fur traders were not generally considered settlers, nor were their movements often recorded. For example, when French fur trader Pierre Lassure reached and explored the Blue Earth River in 1700, a tributary of the Minnesota River that begins in northern Iowa, he found the Iowa, Iavoy, and the Oto encampments. To the west of the Blue Earth River were the Pipestone Quarries, where the Iowa were known to share and trade with other tribes the precious red stone made into ceremonial pipes. Lesur learned these tribes spoke languages other than Algonquin and lived a nomadic lifestyle different from the village tribes of the Northeast. The Sioux were to the west and in northern Iowa. The Iowa controlled much of the land between the Mississippi and the Missouri Rivers to the south. Now in control of western Illinois, the Sauk Meskwaki expanded into the land along the west side of the Mississippi River in Iowa and Missouri. The largest of four main Sauk camps along the Mississippi River was over 60 lodges at Sockanook on the Rock River near where Rock Island, Illinois is located today. 
The Meskwaki had three locations, one next to Sakonuk, one near the lead mines of Dubuque, and another near the mouth of the Turkey River. At this same time, the main Iowa camp was located further west along the lush Des Moines River Valley in current Van Buren County near Iowaville. It was above the large Des Moines River rapids that impeded river travel from the Mississippi, and more importantly, kept the Iowa hidden from early visitors. They also had known encampments on the Iowa River, another near the Pipestone Quarries in Minnesota, and a third by the Salt River in Missouri. The Iowa, a Plains tribe, still hunted the bison far to the west, but lived in villages along rivers with trees and built lodges and canoes, unlike other Plains tribes. The Iowa were known among tribes for not only trading their ceremonial pipes, but also for their salt. Edward D. Neal's paper, The First Iowa Indians in Montreal, tells the history of the Iowa meeting with Canadian fur traders on July 20, 1757. Communications with fur traders indicate the Iowa, who controlled much of future Iowa land, were most likely trading fur by the beginning of the 1700s. The Iowa were a relatively small tribe of an estimated 1,100 in 1760. After Joliet and Father Marquette's visit of 1673, no European settlement was attempted on future Iowa land for over a hundred years due to difficulty of access and travel on Iowa land. Explorers and traders were using both the Mississippi and Missouri rivers for transportation and were creating huge changes in the cultural dependence of tribes on trade items. Trade posts located close to Iowa were the Cota Connell trade post established in 1720 by French traders near today's Bellevue, Nebraska, across the Missouri River from the Las Hills of the Council Bluffs area, the Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin post, and the Sauk and Fox post at Fort Armstrong at Rock River, Illinois. Within this hundred year period up to the time of the American Colonies Revolution in 1775 to 1783, Locations of different tribes changed as well as their influence due to four main factors. One, forced relocations further and further west due to the push of the French to obtain control of the fur trade and then the western expansion push of white settlers from the American colonies. Two, increased conflicts and fighting among the tribes for decreasing available lands. Three, increased desire for trade items and decreased agricultural efforts by tribes and four, reduced and weakened tribal populations from the cultural introduction of European diseases like smallpox and cholera. During the American Revolution, 1775 to 1783, two events happened that affected tribal movements. The first event was the great effort of the Americans to hold Fort Stanwix, Fort Shire, in the Mohawk Valley near present-day Rome, New York, after a 20-day siege by the British and Iroquois Six Nations, in 1777. The fort maintained control of the portage gateway known as the Oneida Carrying Trail, used to allow trade and travel by water between the Atlantic Ocean and Lake Ontario, connecting the American colonies in Canada. Keeping the fort helped prevent the British from attacking the northern colonies from the west and push the Iroquois further west. The second event was General George Washington sending Major General John Sullivan to defeat the six tribes of the Iroquois Nation south of the Great Lakes, which he accomplished by 1779. This opened the door for white settlement further west of the colonies, dislocating even more tribes. French priests counted tribes as individual souls because they were trying to convert them to Roman Catholicism. Fur traders counted tribes by number of warriors to know their strength and ability to bring them furs. The tribes did not have a counting system. Their pictographs drew each animal, but used no numbers. The traders exchanged items with the Iowa for deer primarily, but also black bear, river otter, gray fox, raccoon, badger, rabbit, mink, muskrat, and beaver. Although all kinds of furs were used in European fashions, it was the beaver pelts used in hats and coats that continued to drive the high fur demand and depleted the beaver. However, in Iowa, it was the use of muskrat pelts in fashion known as the poor man's beaver that was most popular. 
In 1788, Julian Dubuque, a fur trader, obtained an exclusive franchise from the Meskwaki tribe for the lead mines on the west side of the Mississippi River. This was possible because he developed a relationship with the tribe by living with them and learning their language like many French trappers did. With their support and labor, he established the first trading business and white settlement on Iowa land. Lead was originally ground into powder and mixed with water to make black face paint. The Europeans wanted lead for making ammunition, lead shot, for their guns. From 1788 to 1810, Dubuque had the lead mines worked with hoe, shovel, crowbar, and pick in crevices of the steep limestone cliffs along the west side of the Mississippi River. He sank no shafts like his successors used to find lead. In 1796, Dubuque acquired a Spanish land grant from the King of Spain for his lead mines and called them the Mines of Spain. By the 1800s, the Sauk, Meskwaki, and the Iowa struggled to protect their Iowa hunting lands from the Sioux, Dakota Nation, and other tribes from the North and West. In Missouri, white settlers were pushing the Osage north across the Missouri River into the Oto and Missouri land in the West and into the Iowa land, especially around the Salt River to the East and the Sauk, Meskwaki by the Mississippi River. By 1802, the Iowa and Sauk, Meskwaki won a decisive battle against the Osage north of the Missouri River and regained control once again over the land, although only for a brief time between the Mississippi and Missouri Rivers east of the Grand River in Missouri. After Missouri became a state in 1821, the Osage, Oto, Missouri, and later the Iowa eventually took refuge in Kansas and Oklahoma. In 1803 to 1804, following a smallpox epidemic in the Iowa main camp, the Canadian fur traders estimated that the Iowa had 800 souls, including 200 warriors, 40 leagues, 120 miles, up the southwest side of the Des Moines, Des Moines River. By 1842, the Iowa census was 472, when the Iowa were completely removed from Iowa and placed on reservation lands in Kansas. The Sauk and Meskwaki were removed from Iowa in 1845. 